Keep punching the face for thinking I'm just a YouTuber. BMG got the city on. Like Curry, that's what none of these niggas are ops. Cause none of these niggas is dirty. The Bronx Drill Movement. He makes good music and brings a type of energy that is hard to replicate. He started rapping at the perfect time and was right beside K Flock every step of the way through his entire rise in 2021. Dougie B was one of a select group of kids with the opportunity of a lifetime in front of him. He was in position to make it out of the hood and pursue a career in music, making money way above the average salary. But unfortunately, he never fully chose to take advantage. He let his demons personally take advantage. He let his demons, personal struggles, and drug habit get in the way, and instead of cap- This is crazy. I was just talking and y'all didn't hear what I was saying just now. That's ridiculous. I just looked and I seen, I'm like, oh, my mic, my mic muted and shit, but I'ma cut that part so y'all don't have to sit through me just talking and y'all not hearing what I was saying. But just now I was saying, with a lot of the drill rappers and shit, they allow clout, money, and all that shit to block their judgment. Once they get lit, or they get a little bit of money, they feel like they can't do no wrong. And anyone correcting them is a broke ass, bum ass nigga. You feel me? They see you as what who how you gonna tell me this, nigga? I make more money. In all actuality, bro, anybody could tell you something as long as it's the right thing. You feel me? Niggas be focused on who telling them instead of what is being told to them. You feel what I'm saying? Cause yo, bro, I guarantee you the same shit if another person that's way off. Way more wealthy says it, they wouldn't take offense, they wouldn't feel no way. Should be crazy, bro. Making money way above the average salary, but unfortunately, he never fully chose to take advantage. He let his demons, personal struggles, and drug habit get in the way, and instead of capitalizing on the opportunity to become a star, Dougie found himself constantly getting high, making bad decisions, going in and out of jail and barely dropping music I ain't for that over nigga, the past three years times. his life has been nothing but chaos he's managed to occasionally drop bangers here and there and shown glimpses of his true potential but never taken the necessary steps to get in the right state of mind to realize it now bronx drill is on the decline dougie's facing serious charges and his opportunity looks like it's been wasted unnecessarily so in this video We'll take a look into the wild journey Dugs has been on since he first gained fame back in 2021. <laughs> Dougie B grew up in the Bronx on 187th Street, a neighborhood known as Sevside. Growing up on the Sev, he met friends like K Flock and B Love. Unfortunately, Dougie experienced tragedy early in his life after his dad passed away when Dougie was in his early teens. In an attempt to cope, Dougie decided to start using perks and Zans, and the habit quickly grew into a crippling addiction. The pills, lack of a father figure, and crime-filled, gang-ran environment of Sebside was a bad combination and would lead to Dougie joining the local Sebside MD blood gang and walling out in the streets, getting into all types of trouble. He, K, and B Love all found themselves in and out the system. Eventually, in 2020, B Love came home and decided to take rap seriously. This same year, K also returned from Juvie, and B Love convinced him to start rapping as well. In late 2020, K and B Love started seeing success when tracks like Op Spotter and Speed Racing began generating attention in the city. Dougie, who was still in Juvie at the time, heard about the success they were seeing and decided that he would try his hand at rap when he got out. In December, when he came home, he, K Flock, and Shai K, another rapper they were cool with at the time, got in the studio and dropped a song called No More Free Dougie B. And this was Dougie's debut on the Bronx Trail scene. In March of 2021, K, Dougie, and B Love teamed up on a song called Brotherly Love. This song went crazy, racking up a million views in a week. It was huge for all three artists and encouraged them to start dropping more. Dougie had just started making music, but following Brotherly Love, he began appearing on more songs, though they were mostly collabs with his other friends who were rapping, like K, B-Love, Yagi B, and Justo B. In summer, 
things really got crazy and the violence in the Bronx spiked. Zebside, the local gang Dougie B and K Flock rep, was a part of a larger alliance known as DOA. And during the summer, DOA's beefs with rival gangs would escalate. During one three day stretch in July, DOA and a rival gang they had beef with both lost members and an attempt was made on Dougie's life. Rival gang members ended up flocking at him and he was hit in the leg. Luckily, he quickly recovered and was back getting sturdy in no time. Along with all the violence, the music was also going crazy. K Flock was blowing up and his breakout hit, Is You Ready, was going crazy. Other DOA rappers like C Blue, Seti, Nazi BK, and C High were all taking off, and DOA had ops like Lee Drilly and D Thing who were also going crazy. Dougie was right in the middle of all of this. And in late summer, he appeared on some of his biggest songs up to that point, like EOS with Seti and Yaki B, and Turnt with Be Love. Following the crazy summer of 2021, Dougie fell back from rap and stopped appearing on songs as much as he used to. However, in October, he announced that he is My son was perked up. Signed with Republic Records. In December of 2021, K caught a body and was locked up. And this was a huge loss for DOA. In 2022, Dougie continued his hiatus from late 2021, but in February, he popped up with the song called Forever On That. The song had one of the best drill beats of all time. Dougie brought his usual energy, and the track went crazy, racking up millions of views, becoming his biggest solo song ever. In March, Dougie was arrested after being involved in a situation yeah, you know what's funny what I be thinking about, dude, with the drill scene sometimes? Like, you see how a lot of niggas, right, e either get locked up for a long time or they die or some shit, right? And a lot of people would, like, say, yo, if this nigga didn't get locked up, this nigga would have been way further. He would have been way better. He would have did this, that, and the third, right? But if you really think about it from a different point of view, there's a lot of rappers that had a lot of potential that stayed free, but their time ran out quick because they weren't able to evolve. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas, you might think they would have evolved if they was out, but who knows if they would have fell right into that same cycle with other niggas. See, like how niggas be like, yo, K-Flock was out right now. This nigga would have been, he'd have been out of here type shit. But who knows if he would have fell into that same cycle with a lot of niggas that had songs that hit millions of views. If you guys notice, whenever a rapper dies or get locked up for a body or some shit like that, their numbers skyrocket way more than the average. You know what I'm saying? So niggas is watching those type of things and they're not s saying like, yo, if he never got locked up or if he never died, the numbers wouldn't have excelled so fast because people wouldn't have been promoting it so much. It wouldn't be such a big topic. Right? I just thought about that just now while hearing this video and shit. Then, where shots were fired outside a courthouse. But he was released a couple of days later. In April, he got the biggest look of his career when he was featured on a K Flock song called Shake It. This was a big record. The label promoted it heavily and even added Cardi B. So when it dropped, the song blew up and racked up tens of millions of views and streams and took over TikTok. With the crazy success of Shake It and Forever On That, Dougie was in position to take over in 2022, but he remained inconsistent. Throughout his rise to fame in 2021, Dougie had continued popping pills heavily, and his substance abuse was a very likely cause of yeah. his in This video right here, doing this video right here was the one of the worst choices my boy ever made. Consistency and erratic behavior. Sometime in early 2022, Dougie started dating Asian Doll, and this relationship would end up leading to problems. A situation popped up where Asian Doll went to Dougie and told him a rumor about something Nazi BK had allegedly told her behind his back. Dougie believed her, and this led to him and Nas falling out and taking shots at each other throughout the year, including crossing each other out in pictures, sending subs on their IG lives and stories, and all the other antics rappers pull when they're beefing with each other. Eventually, things seem to escalate with Dougie saying he was smoking Nas's grandmother in the song and Nas responding by saying he was smoking Dougie's father and referring to him as Druggie B, 
once again referencing the well-known fact that Dougie's perk habit was causing him to wild out. However, shortly after the situation, they were seen on stage together, which showed that although they weren't on great terms, they were able to be in the same place together without anything popping off. In late 2022, Dougie finally dropped new music. On November 18th, he dropped his debut album, Nobody Bigger. The fans were happy with the music and the album did well. Following this album, Dougie took a hiatus until March. Throughout the early months of 2023, a group called The Sweepers who DOA beefed with had been blowing up and a big reason for their success was a song called Seth Side K, This in DOA. This was literally an alley-oop for DOA rappers to diss them back and benefit off all the attention The Sweepers were generating. In March, Dougie B decided to return, dropping a snippet, responding to the sweepers, dissing them back. He recruited Yagi B and Joe Benz, and the result was a track called OA, where they used the dark Jersey Club sound the sweepers had popularized to diss them back. The record took off, racking up millions on YouTube. Once again, Dougie was in position to lock in and go up with his music, but yet again, he remained inconsistent dropping a total of two other songs the rest of the year. To make matters worse, in addition to not making music, he continued getting into trouble. In May, he was arrested on unknown charges. Then in July, he was arrested again, and this time charged with burglary in a situation that there isn't much information on the internet about. In September, he appeared in a Booba 100 video where it was clear he was going through a lot in life. In November, Dougie was arrested once again, adding to his growing rap sheet. In December, K Flock unfollowed Dougie on Instagram, and some suspected it had something to do with the cryptic post Dougie had put up on his story, showing a handful of pills and possibly hinting at him checking out permanently. A few weeks after this, he appeared in an interview high out of his mind and addressed the recent controversy. He admitted he had a substance abuse problem and also said that he and Kay were still brothers and still talked to each other's moms. It was very clear to everybody who saw the video that Dougie was really struggling with his demons and many of the comments were prayers and well wishes for him to get his life together. But unfortunately, this didn't happen and the next month in January of 2024, Dougie was arrested again this time on charges of school abuse and harassment. It's currently unclear whether these allegations are true or not, but if they are, they could possibly result in serious repercussions. This brings us to the present day. Dougie B has a very sad story. He had all the momentum he needed to change his life, as well as his family's and the lives of the people around him but he was never able to overcome his personal struggles. He became yet another artist on the losing end of a battle with their demons, and as a result, experienced all the chaos and drama that come with the erratic decisions, pills, and other substances influence people to make. Hopefully, one day he can find sobriety and peace. But yeah, I ain't gonna front this shit crazy because I actually reached out to Dougie, you feel me? Like, when he was going through all that shit he was going through, try you know, give some type of advice, but you got, I, I, I remember like, yo, I had exchanged your words with certain niggas that surround him and shit. So it probably made him really want to keep his distance. But at the end of the day, bro, you gotta, you gotta, sometimes it's mind over matter in every situation. It's not just how you feel, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Like you gotta, you gotta really use your head sometimes. Niggas just be reacting off emotions. You can't react off emotions because emotions are temporary. But the decisions you make sometimes in life, in life could be permanent. So you gotta know what you're doing. And I just wanted to, you feel me? Sit down and really chop it up with little bro. You feel me? Because I know niggas that been through the same shit. I know niggas that I person all that shit. I know that. You feel me? I know, I know what he going through too. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to chop it up with him and shit, but, you know, it never happened and shit. Hopefully one day, you know, I do get to chop it up with him. Hopefully he he does better in life and, you know, he start making better decisions and shit like that. But y'all hit the comment section and let me know what y'all think about the whole situation, man. If you not subscribed to Stella Gang yet, what you waiting for? Come on, join the squad, man. Stella Gang got the city hot. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you notified every time I drop a new video, man. You got the city, I think it's what's going on, man.